Hey everyone and welcome back to Let's Play the Banner Saga 2. So, most of the comments were strongly in favor of narration, which means that's what I'm going to do. Let's continue then. We need more supplies. We only got 6 days. And 34 renown. Let's get at least 10 days of supplies. We don't know how long it's going to be before we can resupply. Yep, this seems reasonable. We still got some renown for promotions. Alright, let's see what's going on. Neat's boys are just finishing eating and starting to play when you approach her. Are they getting plenty to eat? I think so. They still have enough energy to get into trouble. It's for the best. Hopefully they can stay children as long as possible. I hope so too. Without allowing you to refuse, she puts a spoon and a bowl with cooked eggs in your hands. You have to try this. It's a family recipe. You take a bite. They're good, but you don't taste anything special. What do you think? They just taste like eggs. Really good. I think your family is onto something here. I've never really liked eggs. <laughs> okay, well... Let's not be an ass here. Morale is pretty important. Let's go with the second one. Really? You really think so? Yeah, maybe you can set up a shop in Arberang. The archer suddenly looks very amused. I'm glad you like them, but they're just eggs, cooked like any others. My mother used the family recipe story on each of us kids at one time or another when we wouldn't eat. She tried to guilt you into eating? She tried anything and everything to raise us, feed us, keep us from getting into too much trouble. Now, with my boys, I understand why. I'm sure you had a bit of that with Alet, but even more so now with this caravan. I doubt there's anything you wouldn't try to keep everyone alive. You think back on all the choices you've made. Just know that we understand and appreciate it. Eventually. Thanks, Need. Alright then. So, do we want to rest? We got normal morale. Alright, let's rest at least once. Twice. There we go, good morale. And we can get some more supplies. We'll get more renown. Wait, can we not buy any more supplies? That's strange. Okay, I can't buy any more supplies. That's interesting. Okay then. Let's move. The cards just start moving away from the village when you hear a girl shout, Papa, you turn to see where she is looking and gasp. From the east, over ground you recently crossed, comes a large number of missing clansmen, fighters and Val. Is that Roga? Someone asks. At the front of the group is the former governor of Borsgard. Husbands run to their wives, and children scream in excitement for their parents they believe to be dead. You make your way, to, you make your way out to greet the group as well, but Roga holds up his hand as you near. Alright. Something is about to happen, I think. It's as hard as ever to read the governor's face, and Dagger naturally says nothing. I hope you didn't get all cleaned up for me, Rogue. Was it too much for you to just die when that serpent struck? You seem to be hard to kill as well. Remember that. His tone is not exactly threatening, but not warm either. You decide what to say next. Okay, what do we want to say next? What happened to you after the serpent attacked? Do you need to rest before we move on? Okay, let's ask what happened. I might ask you the same. Dagger and I tried to save a few families before running. You glance at the silent guard, but he neither confirms nor denies the story. The old wood was like a maze, but we finally escaped, picking up others along the way. We waited for you until we were damn near out of food. I started pushing everyone hard, only sending a couple of men to Tolir for supplies. The same with us, but our scouts never returned. Raga scratches the scar around his neck. That's odd. Neither did ours. But here we are. Most of us still alive. Okay. I'm going to speak to some of the others. Do you need to rest? Well, do you need to rest? That's up to the clansmen and fighters. I'm only a servant of the people. His tone is strange. Like he's been rehearsing this statement, along with that unnerving grin. I'm sure you could all use a bite at least, if not a few hours to close your eyes. 
if that's what they want. You glance at Dagger and get nothing but his stony gaze in return. Alright, well... Thank you for collecting the rest of our clan. Our clan? Is that really what we are? One clan? Believe it or not, that's exactly what we are. I suppose we'll see. We won't be the only ones seeking shelter in Arberang. Families have long memories. Hatred can span generations. Don't be surprised if petty arguments and bad blood rule the day. Alright, I'm going to speak to some of the others. Before you do. Dagger shifts slightly. You are shocked by how such a small change puts you on guard. It's not that you're a bad man, Rogue, but you've made some bad choices. On the ships, in the bogs, in Lundar, depths, even in the old wood. And what clan leader leaves half his people behind, scattered and scared? You now notice the fighters gathered behind him. You're a danger to these people. I hope you understand why you have to die. Dagger lunges at you, but an arrow slams into his shield, disrupting his attack. As you fall back in a defensive posture, you nod to Odleaf, who is knocking another arrow. Yep, I knew something is about to happen. Well then, I guess we're fighting them. So, oh yeah, they need to be here. Alright, fair enough. Let's have a look then. Who's coming? Good question. Hmm. The part that kind of sucks is that we won't have a healer. Alright, well, we'll bring Hakon, because he's one of our most experienced fighters here. And he has Tempest. Sundering Impact, yep, he has Tempest rank 2. I could actually promote him one more time if I wanted to, but let's wait with promotions just a moment. Who else? Eirik, I guess. He has the bear. And that would be nice. Alright, Eirik. And who else? One of the Horseborn. Trample, Mule Kick. What are the other alternatives? Ludin. He has Impale. And Embolden. Embolden is nice. And we could promote him, which wouldn't be a terrible idea. Yeah, possibly. Alright, let's promote him. That way we can choose a second ability, which is going to be Pig Sticker. Alright. Confirm, and he's coming. One more person. Let's see. Poison tipped and pin. I do like poison, but I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced. Mule kick, hit and run. Alright, fine. Let's maybe change the order a little bit. Well, I think this is mostly fine. Kind of sucks not having a healer, but oh well. We'll deal with it. Yep, we'll deal with it, I suppose. Now, items. Let's see. Plus two armor on rest. Not sure if I'm going to rest for armor, but we'll use that. And a few items. We got plus three strength on Hakon. That means he's going to have 21 strength. That's insane. This requires rank 8. Rook could use that. Like so. And what else? Almost everyone has something. What's this? Oh yeah, plus one to all stats. Lodin can grab that. And that's that. We got one more item here. Plus three break. Right. That is nice. But who would use that? Good question. I'm not quite sure. Who has the highest armor? 12 is the highest armor we have. That's not very good. Alright, let's give it to Lodin, I suppose. We'll just have one item that nobody is going to use. What's this? Oh yeah, plus two armor on the rest. I think plus one to all stats will be better. Alright, now, do we want to promote anyone else? Maybe Rook. That sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, let's promote the Rook. Although... Yeah, hold on. Can we improve anyone's ability? Let's have a look. Well, no, not really. Hakon? Alright, fine. We'll promote Rook. 
Oh yeah, we don't have enough renown, never mind, we got 12. No more promotions then, let's go. Well, this is going to be fun. Let's see, Hakon will move first. And he could probably kill these two people, yeah, with 21 strength he can kill them, no problem, using Tempest. So that's going to be our first move. And then... This looks like a pretty easy fight, actually. I bet they will get reinforcements. Yeah, there are definitely more than this. This can't be all of it. Anyway, Odelief somewhere in the middle. And something like this. Close to these guys on this side. Hakon can deal with these three. Alright, we are ready. So, we'll move in and use Tempest. That should kill them both. We got 21 strength. Actually, it won't kill them both, but it will do really good damage. There. They are down to 3 and 4 strength. So, they are basically not a threat. Who is moving next? The archer is moving next. Rook. Well, we'll just do some damage, I suppose. He has 12 strength only, which is not amazing. We'll just reduce armor. That's pretty much what we have to do. There we go. So the archer is moving next. Alright, that's fine. So Odleaf, who's moving next? Do we want to take a shot? Yeah, we probably do. Alright, let's take a shot. We'll do some decent each damage. Alright, another archer. I bet she will shoot Odleaf. Yep, she will. That's fine. And it's time to get the bear. Yep. But where exactly? Closer to these people, I think. There we go. Alright. He didn't do much there. What's this again? Divides damage between strength and armor on up to three adjacent targets in front of the bear. Yeah, let's not use that because Rook is also in front of us. We'll just do some damage. There we go. That's decent enough. Okay, not sure why that guy moved away. I guess he didn't want to take damage from Tempest. I can't blame him. Alright, Lodin. What did he have again? Impale and Pig Sticker. And he also has plus three break. So breaking armor makes the most sense here, I suppose. Because he's really done good at that. Alright. So, will they get reinforcements? I guess we'll find out. So, who's moving next? This guy is moving next. I could reach him. If I want to. Yeah, I suppose we can do that. We can poison him. Yep, let's just poison him. There, enjoy your poison. He will attack Odleaf. Yep. She will probably get injured. She's down to free armor and free strength. That's going to be tough to avoid. Alright, time for another Tempest. Yep. There we go, very nice. That's two kills with one Tempest. And Odleaf will go down. That was kind of hard to avoid. Alright, let's do some damage. Maybe kill this guy. Or leave him at one health. He is moving next. Or I can just ignore him. Yep, we'll kill the archer. Like so. We pretty much got this, unless they get reinforcements. I'm not sure if they will. Alright, two more targets. Which means we are about to get pillage mode. Come on, bear. Yeah, let's do some strength damage, because this guy is moving next. So we'll minimize the damage he does. Alright. Looks good. And we'll break his armor. That's what Ludin is good at. Yeah, we got this. Oh yeah, I need to move away to actually do damage. No problem. We're gonna use some armor first, I suppose. 
Well, this fight was easier than I expected it to be. Unless there's going to be part two. And the spillage mod. I mean, we'll obviously have to fight Roga's group more than just this. But it does look like this particular fight is over. Yep, it's over. Alright. I'm curious to see where this is going. Well, we got a promotion. How much renown? 17. Not bad for an easy fight like this. The sound of fighting is replaced with wailing as family members recognize their fallen kin. Raga, you shout, disgusted by the needless bloodshed he forced you into. He's gone, Hakon says. Early in the fighting, he slipped away, but we caught his main dagger. Tuvarl lead the bound silent assassin into the middle of everyone. Rocks and Yogg's dung are hurled at him. Hakon looks at you. Either you handle this or I do. Well, I mean... They did just try to kill us. So I don't think we should show him mercy, to be honest. He is a traitor, after all. Or we could let Hakon handle this. Although, that wouldn't exactly reinforce our leadership, would it? No, not really. It wouldn't. I don't think we should let Hakon handle it. Because that way Rook would probably lose some authority. Kill Dagger. You betrayed us, you shout, and all the clansmen back you with a roar of anger. Raga wanted control, and he used the leaves of everyone here to get it. And you helped him. The man's silence infuriates you. There is no mercy for you. No quick death. You grab a blade from the ground and drive it through Dagger's body. His only sound is a grunt of pain. You nod to Hakon, who easily lifts the man and hooks Dagger on a stout branch by his armor. The clansmen curse and spit at Dagger, or tend to their fallen, and you leave them to it. Plus 5 renown, alright. Plus 61 fighters, plus 98 clansmen, plus 38 Varl, minus 20 supplies. Yeah, our supplies are a little bit low now. Alright then, I don't like that too much. Strumming from Aleo and song from a large number of pure clansmen surprises you. A varl stands in the center of them, blushing. It scurries 200th year. A varl beside you shouts. The rest of the caravan is slowing to check out the commotion. Break out the mid and celebrate. Make a toast to the varl. Make a toast. To scurry, you start. You've already lived longer than any human here will. May your bravery and strength continue so that you share drinks with the grandchildren of our grandchildren. Scurry looks at you and nods. I'll tell them of your bravery and strength. Everyone drinks and laughs and continues on. Morale improved, alright. And plus 10 renown, nice. Well, supplies might be a bit of a problem. Well, we got some forage. We got six days. The surrounding woods look promising for game and you could use a bit of solitude. Soon, the shacks guide you, but in a clearing, the beast is already fallen. Scanning the woods, you hear and see nothing. As you approach the deer, you can tell the kill was recent. A black stone, half the size of your fist, lays beside the animal. You pick it up, knowing it to be a dredge weapon. A rustle in the underbrush nearby reveals two hurlers who immediately create deep noises. They are communicating, then one lashes out and attacks you. Alright. It does sound like we might get some supplies, so that's a good thing. Oh, we can just use rock? Okay then. That might be interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure how exactly we're going to do this. Carefully. Alright, well, I could move in and attack him. We got 10 willpower. Huh. I think we should move in. I'm not going to let them attack me first. That would be silly. We got 12 strength, he has 8 armor. Yep, let's just maximize our damage. The other guy will hit us. We leave him at 1 strength and then attack the other guy. Hopefully that will work. Oh, he's throwing the... That's actually perfect because we'll move away from that crap. 
Alright. So now we'll attack the other guy. Yeah, we got this. They are now both down to very low health. Yep, they can't do anything anymore. We got this easily. Alright. Kill the other guy first. Doesn't really matter which one we're going to kill first. Pillage mode. And we got this. Done. So I assume we'll get some supplies. We got quite a bit of renown at this point. 50 renown. As the dread fall, others from your clan arrive. Not bad, a woman says, booting one of the dredge bodies. A child runs up and does the same. That's enough, leave them alone. Let's see if there are any more of these slugs to kill. Well, I wouldn't mind more renown. Fighters and Val fan out, and you slip through the woods, searching. Ward reaches you quickly of a discovered house of dredge. When you arrive, the dredge look cowed. Those slingers and stone guards stand protectively around some supplies and young. They're a threat to us all, kill them. Charge them, but let them escape. Well, I wouldn't mind the supplies. Yeah, let's charge them, but let them escape. Fighters and Val roar their battle cries and run at the dredge who pick up their young and scatter. A few of the slower ones are wounded in the process, but you're glad it wasn't a slaughter. Plus 12 supplies, I guess it was worth it. Probably. The water in the nearby streams is gradually turning a bright green in places. It looks like the gore from the serpent's wounds. Dead fish are spotted in the dozens, floating by, floating by in the faster moving sections. Some clansmen have fallen ill, others are feeling the effects of only drinking mead. When a few varls spot a section of clear water, the entire caravan gets excited, but the giants hold them back and tell everyone to listen. A faint tune is drifting across the water. No, from the water. Worried whispers ask, what's it mean? Or is it safe? Or I don't care, I'm thirsty. Okay, fill a few barrels, we'll boil it first. Step forward and drink it first. Let the caravan drink their fill. Well, I could drink it first. Alright, let's drink it first. We are the leader after all, right? Let's act like one. You cup the clear water in your hands and drink it. It tastes cleaner than the well water from your home village of Skogger. Everyone is waiting for your verdict. You turn and smile. Drink, you shout. We may not get another chance like this. The caravan rushes to the water, ignoring the tune. They drink deeply, fill barrels, and even wash themselves a bit. Aleo thanks the memory of the god Asalei. And we got some renown. Well, that was worth it. Our morale is still good. Any town? Somewhere around here? We do have almost a week worth of supplies, but yeah, we'll run out eventually. The caravan slows at the site of the field gate bridge. In front of it is a large army of horseborn in formation, weapons drawn. Are these your people, your clan, or herd? He shakes his head but does not speak. His eyes scour the new herd. Hakon calls for shield wall as a precaution. Just as shields lock, a single javelin flies from the center of the horseborn army. Everyone watches it arc through the air and stab the ground only yards away from you. The ground rumbles as the horseborn charge. Alright, I guess we'll have to fight them. But we're going to do this in the next episode, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.